Now we are ready to import our FastQ files into an, a Chen2 artifact so that it can be used for Chen2 analysis. So let's recap. We have a reads folder that contains FastQ files, and in our case, the FastQ files have a specific format. So the, the file names has been assigned by the demultiplexing step uh, in the Illumina based calling system called Casava. And so each, each file name is in the format sample ID underscore S number underscore L number for the lane and then underscore R1, R2 R if they are forward or reverse reads and then underscore 001 dot fastq dot gz. So if we are in this uh, situation, then we can simply use the import method that is based on the standard output of a uh, the multiplex of the Illumina run. So we can activate our environment. If we forgot uh, how our, our environment is called, we can simply list the environments with conda info minus minus EMBS. And then we can activate our conda activate chen2 2021.4. Okay, we have China now. So the command is chen tools import. And then we need to specify some uh, parameters. For example, input path is our reads folder. I add a backslash and the prompt automatically changes with this greater than that is not part of the command. It's just a way to make the command uh, easier to read. We need to specify what kind of artifact we are going to import because import is a generic um, command and can be used to generate various uh, artifacts. For, I, I could import a tree, for example. In this case, we're importing what the type is, and uh, let's use single quotes to specify this. So sample data, and then in brackets, paired end sequences with quality. So these are sequences uh, that could be fast A or fast Q, but with quality. So they are fast Q files. They are paired end, and uh, Let's add some other uh, specification. For example, we need to specify where to save the file. Output path can be row reads dot q z a, and the last bit is what kind of uh, reads do are we important? Because the, the row reads, as I said, they can uh, be formatted in different ways. In this case, we are exploiting the fact that uh, they are in the default format out of the sequencer, so they have not been renamed or manipulated, and so we can uh, let chime infer all the data from the reads name. So input dash format, it's cassava 18 single lane per sample dir fmt. Not bad. Finally, we hit enter to execute. And we are done. Just to cover also a little, a more generic uh, uh, scenario, let's suppose that we have and I can deactivate time for a moment. Let's suppose that we, that we have a different uh, folder. So we we know that we have fastq files, but they might have a slightly different extension, for example, fq.gz, or they might be just sample id underscore r1, r2, instead of all the other bits that sometimes are removed. So in that case, we cannot, we cannot rely on time automatically detecting the identifier. So we need to specify it uh, ourselves with a text file called manifest file. That is either two or three columns, depending if they are single or paired end. So in our case, it's three columns, sample ID, forward absolute path, and reverse absolute path. So we need to create a new file with these three columns. And first we can create the header with echo, minus e, sample ID, slash t means add a tab here, forward absolute file path, and then reverse file path, and we redirect this into, for example, uh, manifest dash one TSV. So now if we check the file, we have this three columns file, but it's empty. We need to add the samples as well. For to do this, we can do a loop, and it will be just a little bit easier if we make a script instead of typing a long command. We can, just for demonstration purposes, just make a, a long command. So the for loop would be for, 
variable name, we can decide whatever we want, four in our, in our case, because uh, we are getting the four files, the forward files in reads. And to select only the forward files, I will select F, uh, star underscore R1 and then star GZ. Just to make a test loop, again, I hit enter, I didn't finish, so I get this prompt, but the greater than is not part of the command. Do echo dollar four, done. Okay, I'm looping through the reads. Now I can add some, some new bits, for example, I can say that my identifier, so id equal base name dollar four, so I remove the directory and I just keep the second part and then pipe cut minus f1 minus d underscore, where I want to remove, I want to keep the first bit after splitting the string on the underscore. And now to check that this is working, my echo can become echo dollar id dash four. Okay, I got what I want. Now I need also the reverse file, but it's quite easy to get it because I just need to replace R1 with R2, and R1 only appears here. So as long as this is true, what we can do is to make another assignment. So uh, reverse, for example, equal, and say it will be the forward variable when I replace R1 with R2. And again, I can also add the, the reverse variable in this print, this echo statement, just to see that, uh, that it's working as you expect, and it is. But we need the absolute file, the absolute path. So if we remember that pwd is a special variable with our current directory, we can simply prepend this to our files like this. So <clears throat> to start from scratch, I can do for loop. Then I create a new variable with the base name of my forward width, and I will split the string on the underscore, so minus d for delimiter underscore, and minus f for field, the first field. I don't need the semicolon because I'm adding new lines. Then the reverse file will be the forward variable where you replace, and this is the syntax with the slashes to replace a string in a variable, r1 with r2. And finally, I can make an echo, again with the minus e to um, to, to basically to have some special uh, characters uh, being interpreted, like the slash t to become a tab. What I need is id, a tab, pwd forward slash four. You, you can either add or remove this bracket, it's just that it can be safer sometimes when you have uh, to mix with other characters, so four, or, or to add clarity, pwd. Rev, close the string with another quote, and then I'm done. Yes, I need to add double quotes because I need to also interpolate the variables. So dollar ID needs to become the actual ID. Now it's much better. Okay, now I can redirect the output of this for loop into my manifest file using two greater than. I will append to the file rather than uh, overwriting it. And if I check my work, I have something that looks like a metadata file. I can check with less minus s to avoid the word wrap and be sure that it's uh, it's okay. Looks so. Looks good. And now, if uh, we want to have a small shortcut, and I think we do, secfoo metadata can create a blank metadata file starting from a directory. So, in our case, we have a reads directory with some reads. We can specify the tags that specify which reads are forward and which reverse, but by default they are uh, the Lumina tags. So secfoo metadata reads will automatically create a full manifest file with the header and all the files that we need. And we can simply redirect the output to a new manifest. Secfoo metadata uh, can also be secfoo secfoo metadata can also be used to create blank uh, chime, dataist, or, or chime1, uh, or lotus.
Now we can use another command to import the read. So we need to activate our um, chime to environment again. And again, chime tools import minus minus input path. In this case, our input is no longer the folder with the reads, but the manifest. Because in the manifest, then chime will find also the absolute path to the reads. Again, minus minus output dash path, the output um, manifest. Again, we need to specify a type and a format. So minus minus type, in this case, would be sample data, and as before, paired and sequences with quality. So the exact very, the very same uh, type, because this is it. What we are changing now is the way we are uh, feeding the information to Chime. So in this case, it will be, and again, for clarity, I go to a new line. Minus minus input format paired and fast queue manifest thread 33v2. So this is the quality score encoding. And we have now two artifacts. One was created exploiting the file names coming out of from the Illumina machine, and the other using a manifest file, so a more general approach. And with this artifact, we are ready to uh, start our time to workshop finally.